I want to put a content warning right at the beginning of this episode. When some people are able to slip by the system, terrible things can happen, and a parent killing their own child is the worst. It is a shocking, evil event that defies reason, especially when it's a mother. This is the story of Teresa Knorr, an evil bitch that got better than she deserves, and this is Below the Salt. Hey, what's up? Not much. I'm excited for this episode, though. Yeah? Yeah, it's super fucked up. You know, I think I've read through this once a while back, but I didn't really retain anything, so I'm very interested to hear the well, details good, that you cooked up. Well, because I got a lot. Okay. Well, and um, seriously, it's messed up. Okay. Uh, first things first, we are in the Bull of the Salt basement. Um, it's coronavirus yes. season, so we're... Uh, Here we are. We're t- we are bunkered down. Um, we're not... We're, we're we're fine. Yeah, we're we're okay. Um, we got we got supplies that we need. And we're all good, but uh, things things are a little crazy. So you know, just just to give you some fun context for the uh, the recording that we're about to give you. So. Yeah, not that it has anything to do with this story, but it it's just kind of fun. Like it's atmospheric, timeliness. Yeah. Okay. For future listeners, and maybe when we look back on it. Yeah, we'll be like, oh man, you remember coronavirus? Remember how bananas yeah. that was? Mm-hmm. So, okay. Alrighty. Yeah. H- Shall I jump in? Yeah, well, hit me with those deets. Alrighty. Teresa Nor was born Teresa Jimmy Francine Cross. Wait, Jimmy? Yes. Like, like J I M M Y? I E. Oh, okay. Just a cute little okay. name. I actually like that. Yeah. On, funnily enough, March 14th, which is today, the what? day we're recording. Hey. Happy, happy birthday, Teresa. Uh, I hope happy, you're rotting in prison. Yeah, happy uh, Pi Day as well. Yes. 3.14. Yes. She was born in 1946. 46, so okay. So she's in her 70s now. Yeah, she's in her 70s. Um, And this episode will be coming out in just a few days. So um, Yeah, I think so, on the 16th of yeah. March. So you guys will be a little bit behind the times, but that's okay. That's okay. We press on. Yes. Well, Teresa, she was the younger of two daughters. Okay. Born to Swanee Gay and James Jim, which is where Jimmy comes ah, from, yeah, yeah. Cross. Swanee Gay, that's... I think it's kind of a cool name. I it's, actually dig it. It's not it. a name you'd hear these days, that's not for sure. Not at all. Okay. Um, she did also have a half-brother and sister from her mother's previous marriage, mm. but I don't believe they lived together, so she just lived with her older sister. Okay. Yeah. Her father, Jim, worked as an assistant cheesemaker. Oh. Uh, yeah. You know, respect for cheesemakers. Yeah. Like, I can't make cheese. Me neither. No. So, like, I think that's... my mom can, but I can't. Well, we should, we, speaking of apocalypses, we should, we should put her to work. I know. After, you know, yeah. when society crumbles. Yeah. Well, he actually made pretty good money as an assistant cheesemaker, and he was soon able to move the family from Sacramento to a really nice house in Rio Linda, California. Ooh, Rio you know? Linda sounds well. I think, is that in the LA area? I think so, okay. but I don't know for sure. I don't know California that okay. well, to be honest. <laughs> That's fine. Um, however, by the late 50s, so when Franny, or when Teresa, sorry, her middle name is Francine, and I just looked at that. When Teresa was only in her mid to late teens, in the 50s, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's mm-hmm. and had to quit his job. Gotcha. Um, luckily, though, her mother, Swanee, was able to keep the family afloat. Like, she made good money. Good I'm not Swanee. sure what she was doing, though. Hmm. Um, I just looked it up real quick. Rio Linda is also in the Sacramento area. Oh, it is yeah. in the Sacramento uh-huh. area. Okay. Well, they got a nice house there instead of just living in the little apartment. Very so. cool. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, Swanee was able to help the family, but Jim... I believe was feeling very emasculated. Well, you know, we can't have that in the 1950s, mm-hmm. that's for sure. Yep. So he got really depressed and really frustrated, and he did become pretty abusive, you know, verbally. I don't so know about pretty, physically, uh, but pretty wasn't pretty great. standard formula here yeah. for the day, back in the day. And then in 1961, Ugh. Swanee died. Oh. Yeah, she nice. had congestive heart failure. Aww. And Teresa was actually really close to her mom, so things were definitely not good. Okay. And after Swanee died, they were not able to afford the home in Rio Linda anymore, and they had to move away. Yeah. Okay. But only about a year after her mother died in 1962, when Teresa was only 16, she met a man named Clifford Clyde Sanders. 
Okay. He was 21 at the time. Mm. And they got married. Okay. Yes. After they got married, Teresa dropped out of school and was pregnant immediately. Whoa. Maybe before the birth. Yeah, that might explain why they got married so yeah. quickly. Not 100% sure. But she gave birth to her first child, a boy named Howard. Howard, okay. And, you know, their life wasn't really that great either. Um, yeah, well, I mean, they're just starting out. Yeah, and... Teresa and Clifford were not super compatible. Teresa was very possessive and easily became jealous. Okay. She constantly accused him of infidelity, cheating, cheating you know. And in the summer of 1964, after they had been married for about two years... She claimed that he had punched her in the face during an argument. Whoa. She did report this to the police, but she ended up refusing to press charges against him. Reported but not charged. Yeah, and so the I'm case so was glad dropped. People aren't in charge of who gets cases any or who gets charges anymore. I know, right? Because like, um, that's how that's how abusive situations continue. Like this nowadays, it's not up to a person, the victim. Whether the person gets charged or not. The mm-hmm. state presses the charges, yeah. not you. Yeah, and this is, there's a lot of stuff that kind of happens like this in this story. That's oh, why in no. the intro I said when people can slip by the system, yep. like, people just don't help each other in this story, yeah. and it really makes me frustrated. Yeah. But, anyways, that summer, which was 1963, or I'm sorry, I believe this was 64. Okay. Well, it was Clifford's birthday on July 5th. And he went out, you know, with some buddies, you know, went and had a couple drinks, which, cool. Yeah, sure. But the next day, Teresa got super mad at him, started Mm. freaking out, yelling, because she was pissed that he didn't spend his birthday at home with her. Which, like, I I understand, like, if you didn't want to spend your birthday with me, I'd be upset. But also, you're allowed to go hang out with your buddies for your birthday, too. Well, yeah, and as long as, like, things are communicated and no, like, no one's, like oh, I had this big thing planned for you, but then you decided to blow me off and hang out with your buddies. Yeah. Like, no problem. Like, so yeah. obviously communication and trust is a, is big a huge problem. problem yeah. Yes. But anyways, during the argument, Clifford told Teresa that he was going to leave her. He was fed up, done with this. So yeah, he's going to leave. Teresa got so angry that she went and grabbed a rifle and shot him in the back as he walked out the door. Oh man. He died. Whoa. Well, okay. Yes. Well, it's just some straight up murder because getting shot in the back, usually people, um, if you go to trial and the evidence is that you shot someone in the back, that's pretty good for murder. Yeah. Not um, she was arrested for his murder. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, well, so far so good. Yes. Um, she pleaded not guilty, of well, course, mm-hmm. claiming she acted in self-defense mm-hmm. because Clifford was a violent alcoholic who physically and verbally abused her. However, several of Clifford's relatives... And Teresa's own sister Whoa. all claimed that Teresa killed him maliciously and without provocation and that he was not violent or abusive wow. and would never have hit her. Yikes. Yeah. Poor Mr. Sanders. Mm-hmm. Um, her own sister, again, her name was Rosemary, I believe, uh-huh. even said that Teresa would kill Sanders before another woman could have him. Oh, Yeah. Geez. But even after all that, she might have a, a, a nut loose somewhere. Yeah. Okay. But even after all that, Teresa was acquitted in September of 1964. Weird. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly what happened. I tried to look for some articles and really couldn't about, find anything. About the trial. So, yeah, she just was acquitted. That's weird. Well, I think I think sexism might have swayed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They might have been like, oh, a woman couldn't possibly do that, which is... Not good. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the opposite of what equality is. Yep, exactly. Yeah. But then, just a couple months after the trial, Teresa gave birth to her second child. What? Yes, she was pregnant with Clifford's child when she killed him. It was Clifford's child. Yes, okay. it was Clifford's okay. child. Um, yeah, so she gave birth in March, on March 16th, actually, which is the day this will be coming out, two days after her hey. own birthday. Yeah. All these Pisces. Yeah. Um, sh- this child was a daughter named Sheila. Okay. So we have Sheila and what was the boy's name? Howard. Howard and Sheila are the kids. Okay. Yes. Howard and Sheila. So yeah, she was single. You know, she gave birth. Um, soon after she gave birth to Sheila, she began drinking very heavily. Oh, man. And she began a relationship with a man named Estelle Thornsbury. Or Thorsbury. I'm not 
sure how to say that because okay. I'm dumb. Thorsbury? Thorsbury, yes. Okay. They ended up moving in together, okay. but the relationship ended after just a few months because Estelle left Teresa after becoming frustrated that she would constantly leave her children with him to go out and drink and party. So, Teresa was going out and drinking yes. and partying. Okay. So, Teresa's presumably self-medicating. Yes. For her whatever her condition is, mm-hmm. and he's not putting up with it. Yes. Okay. Um, Estelle also discovered that she was having an affair with his best friend. Okay, so, like... So it's Which so... are the reasons that she killed her old husband. Yeah. So we're not dealing with normal oh, no. people here. No, okay. n- not at all. Okay. Yeah. Soon after the breakup with Estelle, Teresa met another man, a Marine named Robert Knorr. This okay. is where she gets her name. current name Teresa from. Teresa Knorr, okay. Yes. She became pregnant, and okay. seven months into the pregnancy, they got married in oh, July okay. of 1966. So she was probably showing at the wedding. Oh, definitely. Okay. The third child was another girl. Her name was Suzanne. The third or child. Or Suzanne. Yeah, the third child that... Teresa's third child. Oh, okay. First child with Robert. Oh, okay, sorry. But her third child. I thought child. we were talking an additional child to the child she was having when she was w- no. married. Okay, no. so so we've got Howard and we've got... Sheila. Sheila. And Suzanne. And now Suzanne, okay. Yes. Her and Robert do end up having three more children together throughout Whoa. their marriage. So okay. she has six. Six? Yes. Wow. Yes. Oh, I'm glad six children are in the care of this woman who's yes. clearly stable. Mm-hmm. The three following children are two boys, William and Robert, okay. and another girl named Teresa, who they call Terry. Interesting. Okay, so we've got oh, Howard, Howard, Sheila, Sheila Suzanne, Suzanne, William, William Robert, Robert, Teresa, Teresa, Terry. Teresa Jr. Yes. Okay. They do call her Terry, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Eventually, Teresa started accusing Robert of having affairs. Again. Yeah. When she was the one who was actually having affairs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. He well, ended I... up leaving her in 69. Okay. Yep. And um, the divorce was finalized in 1970. Man, they had and a lot of kids in, in a short amount of time. Yes, they did. It wow. was like one kid a year. Yeah. Yeah. In 1971, she married a, ran- a man named Ronald Pulliam, but he left her in 1972 because she started leaving all her kids with him and going out and having parties and accusing him of affairs, and he just was like, yo, this shit is <laughs> crazy. <just> crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Her final marriage oh, man. was to a man named Chester Chet Harris, and okay. they got married in 1976. Okay, so a couple of years after po- po- Polium? Yeah. Okay. Polium seems to be the smartest guy. I know, he got out of <laughs> He's it He's like, fast. all right, okay, this is, this is not good. I'm mm-hmm. out of here. Yeah. Yep. So they got married in August, uh-huh. like I said, of 1976, and Chet actually became really close with Suzanne. Okay. Yeah, nothing, like, creepy or gross. Just, they just were close. They got along. Yeah. He was, like, a good stepdad, you okay. know? But this made Teresa super jealous. Oh, my God. So, they got married in August, and by November, Teresa had filed for divorce because she was jealous of his relationship with her daughter. Yes. She sounds like she m- might be, like, schizophrenic. Yeah, I'm not possibly. sure. Um, It also is reported a lot that... Of, like, Inherent yeah, and this thing is kind of interesting. Okay. Um, Teresa did report that she discovered that Chet enjoyed taking nude photographs of women, and this was found, I guess, to be true. But it was of of age women, and it was consensual. Hmm. So, like, I get that you would be upset if your husband just didn't tell you he was doing that. Yeah. But, but... he wasn't doing anything wrong or yeah. illegal or bad or nothing with her daughter, as far as we know. Hmm. You okay. know. Okay. Well, well. All right. But yeah. So now. It's the end of 1976. Teresa has had five failed relationships, and she's the single mother of six children. How is she supporting them? Do we know at all? Like how well, she made we'll money? We'll find out oh, a okay, little okay, bit. Okay. She's getting a lot of money from the state. This time. Oh, okay, for welfare. Yes, for and also there's kids. a few other things that come up. Interesting. Huh? Yes. So Teresa, her alcoholism quickly worsened. Well, the yeah, whole situation a lot of just got horrible, yeah. and she also gained a ton of weight super okay. super fast which you know i don't care i don't think it's most people would actually care but she cared and that just made her oh, okay. angrier and more depressed which made her drink more which made her dr- gain more weight you know so things are deteriorating quickly yes okay. and she became extremely 
extremely abusive towards her children. Yeah. Physically, verbally, psychologically, you know, anything you can think of she was doing to these kids, right? Right, right. Um, she disconnected the phone. Mm. She wouldn't allow any visitors inside the home. They lived in a two-bedroom apartment at this time, oh, no. so seven people, you know? No, yeah, seven people. Seven people in a two-bedroom apartment. very young children. Yeah. Ranging to, uh, her oldest might be, like, preteen. Ten-ish, yeah, preteen. Yeah. Yeah. Neighbors reported that it was filthy anytime they could see inside yeah. and that it had a heavy smell of urine. Yeah. Yeah. Human urine. Yes. Yes. And they also reported that they rarely saw any of the kids, but when they did, they were fearful, high strung, not happy. Yeah. So the kids were basically like walked up? Pretty much. Okay. They were allowed to leave not... like for school, but then they had to come right. home. Their timing was very strict. And as they got older, that would continue. Like, she would have them run errands for them, for her. But she would time them. And if they spent more time than she thought they should, like, at the grocery store, they would get in trouble. And some of the ways they would get in trouble are beatings. Mm -hmm. And she would even force the older kids to to hold down the other kids while she would beat them. She would force feed them, particularly the girls. She would force feed them fattening foods. To make them gain weight as well. So it's the whole misery loves company type thing. She would burn them with cigarettes and she would throw knives at them. Particularly when she was drunk to practice her aim. Uh, I'm speechless. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh boy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. um, Okay. Uh, All right. Well, let's just, I'll just absorb that fact and let's keep going. Yep. She did own two guns. That's not good. And once when. She had been drinking for a little bit. She called her youngest, Terry, mm-hmm. into the room, held the pistol to her head, and threatened to kill her. Jeez. She didn't. Um, well, Terry. The kid's gotta be so young. Oh, yeah, she's okay. super young. Terry reports that she had held the gun to her head so hard that even the next morning there was still an imprint of the, of the, non- muzzle. Of the muzzle against her forehead. Oh, man. Yes. Okay. So... Um, Terry also believes that, yes, like you were saying, Teresa was getting jealous of Sheila and Suzanne because they they were were... starting to mature, you know? They were, you know, in their prime of their womanhood, and Teresa was aging and overweight and not doing so hot. Suzanne had it particularly rough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Something crazy. Remember how Suzanne was close with Chet? Yeah, yeah. Well, Teresa believed... That Chet had turned Suzanne into a witch. Well, of course she did. <laughs> yes. Um, how does that even work, <laughs> oh, man? Okay. I have no idea where that. She even turned comes you. From. He turned you. Yeah, he turned you into a witch. How does a random person do that to <laughs> I don't another know, person? Man. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay. after one severe, like particularly severe beating, Suzanne did run away, but she was picked up by the police and placed in a psychiatric hospital. She told the police and she told the staff at the hospital about the abuse that her and her siblings suffered from her mother, but they didn't investigate. Um, Teresa came to pick her up and just told them that she suffered from, quote, mental issues. So they just didn't investigate. I love that that's, like, all they had to do, like... Yep. There's no, like, follow-up, no... Nothing. Okay. Yeah, so Suzanne was released back into Teresa's custody... And she was punished by a beating while Teresa was wearing leather gloves. That specifically was mentioned. Weird. Yeah. And Teresa subsequently pulled all her children out of school. So none of them ever really progressed past the eighth grade. At the oldest. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Holy cow. Yup. Well, in 1982, when Suzanne was 16, Mm -hmm. Teresa became convinced that... Her weight gain was caused by Suzanne casting evil spells on her. Well, yeah, there's no other explanation for it, for yeah, sure. Yeah, clearly it's not your alcoholism or no. lack of any physical activity she just or throws, anything like that. She should just throw Suzanne into a pond. Oh. Find out if she's a witch. <laughs> she does something. <laughs> oh, no. So, Suzanne, of course, is like, no, I... Like, I'm not fucking cursing you. I'm not a witch. Suzanne's like, no. Yeah. So what does Teresa do? 
She fucking shoots her in the chest what? with one of her guns. Oh my god. Um, luckily or not, for Suzanne, it was only a twenty-two. Okay, so... So, it um, just became lodged, in like, her in her sternum. Oh, it didn't yeah. penetrate? Well, it just got stuck, stuck in, there. in there. Okay. Um, obviously it hurts. She's in pain. She can't move. But she Teresa... She to go to the hospital immediately. Teresa does not allow her to leave. You know, she's not going to get her medical attention. And she leaves Suzanne for dead in the bathtub. But she's not fatally wounded no okay and she survives yeah she eventually starts getting healthy yeah and her sisters terry and sheila Take kind her. of nurse her back oh. to health right Jeez. yeah so she survives being shot in the chest by her mom you know why she survived because she's, she's a witch yeah definitely yeah. not because she saw her with a 22 and mm-hmm. one of the more sturdy parts of the human body Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so two years later Oh, excuse me? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. In 1984, Suzanne and Teresa got into another argument, and Teresa stabbed Suzanne in the back with a pair of scissors. She still, of course, refused to let Suzanne get any medical treatment. And this kind of finally was like the straw that broke the camel's back for Suzanne, you know? The straw that stabbed the the camel's back with scissors. The scissors that stabbed its back. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. That was good. Uh huh. Well, she said that she was going to move out. She wanted to go to well, Alaska. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I'm out of here. Anywhere, even Alaska sounds better, yeah. you know. Seriously. But remember, Teresa would never let her kids even leave the house. Yeah. But after Suzanne said this, Teresa agreed, weirdly enough. Well, she probably was like, oh, good, uh, the witch isn't going to be in the well, house yeah. anymore. But she had one condition. Oh, no. She wanted Suzanne to let her remove the bullet that was still in her chest. So that it could not be used as evidence in the event that Suzanne ever reported so the abuse. Carve it out of her? Yes. <sighs> so Suzanne reluctantly agreed. She's like, you know, as long as I can get out of here, right. fine. Yeah, sure. So Teresa gave her a bunch of liquor Ugh. and Melaril capsules to use as an anesthetic, right? Okay. To, like, knock her out. Yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah, so mm-hmm. once Suzanne had passed out, which, by the way, was not, like, in a bed or anything, but on the kitchen floor, apparently... Good, yeah, really sterile environment. Yeah. yeah, Teresa ordered her then 15-year-old son, Robert, to remove the bullet with either an X-Acto knife or a box cutter. I've seen both, and I'm okay. not sure well, which is a similar accurate. kind of razor. Yeah. Okay. Um, either one, not appropriate for any kind of medical no. situation. Nope. No. But so he did. He removed the bullet. I mean, scalpels are kind of sharp, similar to but... an X-Acto knife. No. But they not gonna. It's just not the, the same. same purpose. Yeah. yeah, and plus I'm sure it's it's dirty. Oh yeah, or because dull. Because the next day Susanna awoke and she is in extreme pain. Yeah. She can't move, and soon she had developed jaundice. Whoa, from the sepsis. Infection. Yeah. And she became extremely delirious. Okay. Yeah. Her condition worsened each day. And Teresa attempted to aid her with antibiotics and ibuprofen, but, you know, nothing well, was working. full-blown sepsis. You yeah. need real... You need the good stuff. Yeah. So, Teresa told her children that Suzanne's illness was a result of possession by Satan. Well, of course it is. Mm-hmm. Oh. And that the only way to purge the demon was by fire. So, on July 16th in 1984... Teresa packed all of Suzanne's belongings into garbage bags and bound her arms, legs, and mouth, I believe, with duct tape. Jeez. She made her sons, Robert and William, carry Suzanne to the car, and the three of them drove her to Squaw Valley. Okay. They unloaded Suzanne and her belongings on the side of the road, and Teresa doused her in gasoline oh and God. fucking lit her on fire. So we've crossed the line from severe abuse to just murder attempt Mm -hmm. oh to murder she dies oh yeah yeah suzanne dies her body is found the next day but due to the state of the remains Mm -hmm. they're not able to identify uh, identify her and Uh she's classified as a jane doe but during an autopsy they were able to find out that she was alive when she was laid on fire (laughs) so it was the fire that killed her yeah okay yeah wow so so one um, one down so when i so when people start feeling bad about their parental situation, I there is a little perspective, but it doesn't <laughs> it also should be like, hey, if you're in an abusive situation, get out, as re- soon as you reach can. out, get help, 
and get out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, after Suzanne's death, Teresa's rage and abuse became mainly focused on the oldest daughter, Sheila. It's very interesting that she's only targeting her female uh, children soon. It's actually really common. Oh, yeah. In filicide, which is when a parent kills their children, Mm -hmm. it's very common for mothers to more often kill daughters their daughters and for fathers to kill their sons interesting i huh? i th- the i my the first thing that pops into my head when i hear that is that um they see themselves in their their children mm-hmm. more so oh, certainly. In, in children and that are their same the one sex. thing that is really interesting about teresa i was reading a bit Names. about filicide that usually a mother will kill like an infant or a young baby because typically the cause of it is just being overwhelmed by needing to take care of these children maybe even combined with postpartum yeah and a father will usually kill an older child not even even quite a teen more like a preteen or an adolescent because there's a sense of shame and being not able to provide for the family and Mm. then the father is more is also more likely to commit murder suicide while the mother is more likely to just commit murder isn't that interesting that is really the father's more likely to do murder suicide yeah and kill the whole family oh because he has failed yeah so he's going to so he'd rather his family be dead than him not be able to so he's going to annihilate the family and himself because he failed yeah whereas the mother is just mad at the specific child or just a specific instance. And also with mothers, usually it's a younger child because in a lot of cases, the mother is suffering from, like, severe postpartum. Yeah. So, yeah, just kind of interesting, you wow. know. Okay. Fun fun facts yeah, about filicide. We'll put quotation marks around fun. But, yes, interesting, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. So, back to Sheila. She was suffering a lot. Um, in May 1985, when Sheila was about 20... Oh. Wait, she's 20 and she hasn't just, like, taken off? Yeah, I mean, back then, like, I guess and what so. are you going to do? She, and yeah, when you've been raised like this, what are you going to do? Yeah, like, you had no nothing else, and you have a, probably something like a 6th or 5th grade education. Yeah, and remember, this is May. Okay. Just remember that this is in May. Yeah, it's, okay. Teresa forced Sheila into prostitution to bring money into the house. What? Yeah. Um, Teresa was actually very happy with this arrangement for a couple of weeks, even going so far as to let Sheila leave when she wanted to go do stuff. Interesting, but in Sheila's situation, she, it, just leaving would probably not even cross her mind. No. Okay. Yeah. However, this only lasted for a couple of weeks because Teresa soon accused Sheila of letting herself get pregnant Oh. and also getting an STD, which Teresa believed she had also contracted via toilet seat that she shared with Sheila. Oh, man, there's a... Mm. The 80s were a bad time for science. Yes, they were. Okay. Well, I mean, it's it was, it was an okay time for science. It was a bad time for homophobia and the, <laughs> the resulting STD <laughs> yeah. uh, problems that were, came from it. Yes. Okay. Sheila denied both claims. Yeah. And this led Teresa to hog-tying her and locking her in a closet. Yeah, yeah. Why would you just help your child and, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. The other children were forbidden from seeing or helping Sheila. Terry, at one point, did disobey and she snuck Sheila a beer. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. She was later, and at this time, Terry was still really young. Yeah, Terry's the youngest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Terry was later interviewed and said that that was just Teresa's way. She would beat them until they confessed. And eventually, Sheila did confess. She said, yes, I am pregnant. Yes, I do have an STD. But it's believed that neither of those were actually true still. And she just was saying it in hopes of ending the punishment. Yeah. 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 Uh, There's there's an interesting thing that came about recently that um, a lot of Americans believe that torture works as Mm -hmm. an interrogation technique. Because it always works in the movies and in TV shows. Um, However... Torture does not work as no. its interrogation technique. If you're being tortured, you will just say whatever. You'll just say anything. Whatever you matter, think matter if it's that true. your torturer wants to hear in order to make it stop. Mm-hmm. It's bad. It's bad information. Mm-hmm. And also, it's wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's let's not gloss over that fact. So, yeah. Interesting so, that this is happening in a in a domestic situation. I know. But so Teresa, right, has been telling her she needs to confess. She finally does, and Teresa doesn't believe her. 
So. Teresa is. Cuckoo. Well, nuthead. yeah, she's cuckoo nut man. Um, she, she's got some sort of condition and she's self medicating and things tend to just deteriorate. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I'm I'm kind of shocked that it's even lasted as long as it has without getting. I know. Like with only one murder, <laughs> to be frank, like. Well, because... two technically. She murdered her husband. Oh yeah. Well, okay. It's only one filicide. Yeah. Because it just seems like it would fall apart so quickly. Well, it does. Okay. All right. Let's hear it. Remember that Suzanne was just killed in 1984, uh-huh. and now it's 1985, and it's only May. Okay. And so things are yeah. escalating. So she throws Sheila in the closet, right? She doesn't believe her when she finally confesses, and so she leaves her in the closet. Ugh. After several days, and this is now just june Mm -hmm. sheila dies in the closet due to suffocation dehydration dehydration, and starvation wow yes her body is left in the closet for three more days to just rot yeah essentially because teresa's just not checking on her wow yep when teresa finally does discover that she dies she again orders her sons william and robert to dispose of the body okay so they place her in a cardboard box and they drive her to a road outside the airport in Truckee, california okay her body was found just later that day um but it also was classified as a jane doe they couldn't tell who she was well they had no connections exactly uh t- quick quick connection to an, an earlier episode Truckee is is donner lake mm-hmm. so uh if you've listened to our donner party episode you will know that this is yep. um sacramento is actually where the donner party eventually found refuge yep. so interesting okay yep well Teresa became worried after sheila's body was moved because she had begun to decompose in the closet and yeah. the smell lingered oh yeah that smell never comes out never mm-hmm. and so it actually isn't until a whole year and a half later in september okay. of 1986 okay. when Teresa's like we gotta, gotta get move. out of here yeah so she gathers you're not getting that cleaning deposit no back. well she gathers her family all of their belongings and leave the apartment and she orders terry to burn it down the the apartment yes you know with like neighbors yes and very... so terry tries she dumps three containers of lighter fluid throughout the apartment and she sets it on fire Okay. However, minimal damage was done because the neighbors are there and they're like, um, <laughs> um, there's a fire. We got to get this taken care of. Well, and so, also lighter fluid just goes up real quick and then yeah, it's done. Yeah, and then it's out. Exactly. Yeah. And it doesn't like catch on anything. And plus yeah. you're sending like a 12 year old to set it on it fire. They're not going to do like stuff. a great job. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't catch on the floor. If you were to put it underneath mm-hmm. firewood, it would work. No, exactly. <laughs> okay. So minimal damage. And the closet Why where Why did we put the youngest yeah, one in charge of the, the uh, disposal <laughs> unit? And the closet where Sheila died was not damaged at all. Yeah, of course. So when investigators come to see what started the fire, they're like, um, what's this smell? What's this corpse what smell? What is this? Well, investigators definitely know that smell. Yes, they do. And they end up removing the subfloor of the closet and they are able to find lots of physical evidence. Ugh. So Teresa goes into hiding. Okay. Tere- just Teresa or all the kids? Too? Well, all of her kids begin to abandon her, really. Good. They all well, just okay. leave. Good, Howard yeah. moves away. They all move away. And they were all of the legal age, so they could just go, except yeah. for Terry. The but she actually ended up taking Sheila's ID cards to pass as a legal adult because they're sisters Good and they look Terry. similar. Right. So she took the cards. Do what you got to do, girl. Yeah. And Terry moved to Utah, up oh. to Salt Lake. Teresa or Terry? Terry. Oh, okay. And she reported the murders and abuse to police and even to a therapist, and none of them believed her. They just didn't look into it at all, which I fucking hate. Yeah, that, I mean, that is kind of how police work worked back then. Like, I know. Unless it was immediately apparent, like, nothing got done. I know. <laughs> it feels like. I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wonder what they even, like, did they say, okay, we'll look into it, and then just never did? I don't know. They like, just I didn't. Just don't it just understand. Everything that I could find said that they just didn't believe her, period. That's ridiculous. So, yeah. Okay. However, one child, Robert, did stay with Teresa. And the pair of them moved to Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And they actually were able to successfully hide for five years. Whoa. Yeah. Well, I guess they just had, the police had no idea where they'd gone. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, in 19... 19- What's Robert's deal? 
Everyone else oh, left. Oh, you're going to find out. Oh, no. In 1991, Robert was arrested after he fatally shot a bartender what? during an attempted robbery in so Las Vegas. So, that's how they're affording their place, is that he's committing petty yep, crimes. Yep, I'm law. sure it is. So, he ends up being sentenced to 16 years in prison for this murder, and Teresa moved to Salt Lake City. <gasps> hey, that's our city. Well, Which is well, also where yeah. Terry is living. Oh. But did, they never they find out. Really? No, they live, like, in the same neighborhood, and they what? don't know. That yeah. would be terrifying. I know. Okay. I know. I hate it so much. What? I mean, did they have a, a specific reason to even come here? I don't think so. Not that I, there's nothing that I can find. They just did. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's horrifying. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad she never found out. I know. Well, Teresa moves up there and she actually becomes a caretaker for her landlord's elderly mother. And that is what she's doing. That's not going to end well. No. I mean, the mom's fine still, but that just is what she's doing. Can you imagine? Um, Can you imagine finding out that the person that you hired to take care of your mom is a multiple murderer? Of their own children. Um, No. Yeah. She's like, I got nothing wrong against parents. I've got got problems with children. Only my own children, I guess. I don't fucking get it, man. Yeah. Well, anyways, in in 1993, Terry is finally, finally, finally able to find people that believe her. Yay. So she actually contacts America's Most Wanted. Hey, shout out to John Walsh. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And then they tell her to also reach out to the investigators in Placer County, which is where Suzanne's body was found. Interesting. And they reopen the invest- the investigation, they listen to her story, and they are able to link the two Jane Does that are her sisters. Finally. And so they well, finally... It's the 90s. Do you think they got DNA? They might, okay. yeah. So they finally, finally, finally believe that she was telling the truth about Holy everything God. that had happened. Oh. So they arrest William in Woodland, California okay. for accessory to murder, right? Yep. He is sentenced to probation and ordered to undergo therapy for participating yeah, in Suzanne's murder. Yeah, accessory, that, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. I guess. Okay. Yeah. He still knew a murder happened and didn't report it. Yeah. So. But he also was a child at the time. Oh, yeah, true. Okay. So, okay, all right. you know. Robert, who of course is already in prison, mm-hmm. was charged again for accessory after the fact as well got some more time yes he only received three additional years though because he he agreed to testify against teresa okay okay. yes and teresa was arrested in salt lake hey hey. yes she was charged with two counts of murder two counts of conspiracy to murder multiple murder and murder by torture which the last two are a little more rare to get. Like, yeah, murder by torture. Well, that's um, that's the thing from the Gabriel Hernandez case that's making it. That's mm-hmm. just landed on Netflix. It's so good, by the way. Yeah, Everybody yeah. watch the documentary. It's, it's called very the similar. Yeah, I think just Gabriel. the trial of Gabriel Hernandez. Gabriel Hernandez. Give it a shout. Give it a look on Netflix. It's very. It's sad. real it's good. It's very similar to this case. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, if it's a, it's a it's a thrilling true crime yarn. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Well, Teresa pleaded not guilty. Of but course. after learning that Robert was going to testify against her, made a deal with the prosecution. Mm-hmm. So she ended up pleading guilty to avoid the death penalty. Okay. Yeah. Um, Was she prosecuted in California or in Utah? I believe California because yeah. that is where, where she's serving happened. her prison yeah. sentence okay. now. So she's sentenced to two consecutive life sentences. Good. She's not getting out until after her second life. No. Okay. And she is eligible for parole in 2027 which is in just a couple oh, yeah, years from now that's coming up so you know i don't know if she'll get it well she's got well she might not old. survive until then who knows yeah, but that's uh, and i wish i don't know what her life in prison is like i wish i could find out yeah but. sometimes uh, unless something's happened you don't really get to find yeah out. but so she's still alive you know she's just in which, uh, california institution for women oh okay yeah. I don't know where that is. I'm not I know sure. where all the men's ones are. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where that one is either. Yeah. I saw it and I didn't write it down. <laughs> Maybe it's in Vacaville? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, so that is the story of Teresa Knorr and what Holy a piece God. of shit she is. She's a monster, and I am so sorry that those kids had to go through all that. Yeah, there's a couple I other... I even if you were one of the ones that survived, you like... Well, there's a couple <laughs> sad little things. One that is interesting, her sister that testified against her ended up also being murdered in 1983, what? and that case is unsolved. Um, Her husband had left on a business trip. This is when she's like 39, I think, 40 uh-huh. maybe. Her husband had left on a little business trip, and he came home... And she was dead at the end of their driveway. She had just been strangled by her mailbox. Um, nobody knows what happened. 
Could it have been Teresa? They looked into that and they uh, don't think it was. They, she has like an alibi. Yeah. Out of state. Yeah. But isn't that sad? Jeez. And then Terry herself, she ended up living in Sandy. Hey. And she got married twice. Mm-hmm. But she died in 2011 when she was only 41 of heart failure, which is what her grandma yeah, Swanee yeah. died from too. So sad. Oh, that is sad. Also, Robert. Yes. Is Jailbird. currently in jail again uh-huh. for eight years for dis for distribution and possession of child pornography. What? Yep. Ew. Yep. Jeez. So you know we've talked about this before how there's always going to be a cycle of abuse and shit. Yeah, so absolutely. You know, if you don't want to have victims kids, if you don't like victims. your kids, don't have fucking six of them. Yeah. Don't have one of them if you don't like kids. I just. It's horrible. It's like one of the worst things that I can think of. So. It's monstrous. It mm-hmm. really is. It's just like, it's weird because evolution has kind of, has, has programmed humans. Not to, to do that. To take care of their kids. Yeah. Like, because from a biological perspective, that obviously makes sense. Like, that's the whole mm-hmm. point. Is, but, like so many things must have gone wrong and to override all that protective um you know yep. instant it's just like that's one of the reasons why it seems so awful to us is because like that is the opposite of what should have happened you know like yep it's it just it, it, it strains the mind to, to even comprehend it sure does and yeah wow uh that's sad. Well. Well, on that bummer note. Yeah. My name is Valerie. I'm Jack. And this is Below the Salt. Oh.